All right, a substantive civil debate. Uh, despite months of rather vicious and nasty attacks between Senator Vance and Governor Walls, they tonight were largely kind and agreeable with each other. They often talked about finding common ground. Uh, they obviously held their toughest criticisms for the folks at the top of the ticket. Uh, Vance clearly, I think it needs to be said, clearly the more experienced debater, the slicker speaker. Um, Waltz's strongest moment, perhaps, uh, came at the end there, talking about democracy. That was also, I would think, Vance's weakest moment all night when he claimed that Donald Trump uh, handed over power peacefully, obviously not accurate. But generally, uh, Dana and Abby, uh, my overall impression is that both men came to seem likable, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's it's uh, quite possible that both men achieved that task. Yeah, I mean, I think this was uh, kind of the rehab debate, rehab in terms of image. Certainly that was the case of J.D. Vance. That was his goal of trying to rehab his image, and more importantly, the image of the guy at the top of the ticket. Uh, but I'm not sure at the end of the day, the day it's really going to matter. I just want to say right before... Uh, you came on. Mm -hmm. We did see something that kind of speaks to what I'm saying. The candidates yeah. chatting, their wives came up chatting. That was yeah. not something we saw anything close to in the presidential. I, I, I think we shouldn't lose track. I think even in the civility of the fact that J.D. Vance came to this debate to land a bunch of punches, and he did. He landed a lot of punches in between all the niceties and all, and all of that. And, and the thing that, that really stood out to me was that Tim Walz did not seem prepared for it. He didn't respond to a lot of the criticisms and attacks that Vance put on the table. Uh, he allowed some clear falsehoods mm -hmm. to just go completely unanswered. Um, he allowed J.D. Vance essentially to dodge on a whole host of issues, on climate change, um, on, on the issue of his flip-flopping on Donald Trump. He, uh, he allowed Vance initially to claim that Trump salvaged the Affordable Care Act. It took him several sentences to get to the part of his answer, Walsh's answer, yeah, Abby, listen, where, I, I, where, he, where he actually responded to that. I mean, I think there was a clear lack of preparation and execution here I on think that he, part. I think that actually it's the opposite. I think he had too much preparation. Maybe, yeah. He had so many lines that he was clearly trying to say yeah. that he didn't listen and said when, when uh, J.D. Vance said one of the many, many things he um, really hit Kamala Harris on, not Tim Walls, but Kamala Harris, he didn't respond because he clearly had things in his mind. I think the lack of interviews that he has done with national media, with local media, it showed. He needed more reps. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I mean, uh, J.D. Vance is uh, much more uh, experienced at this, at public speaking, at defending himself, at pivoting. You talked about uh, the many times that Walls let Vance get away with saying things that weren't true. Um, and you talked about the Obamacare one as if Donald Trump actually had tried he to save Obamacare. And just to be clear, he eventually did address that part no, of he it. Did. But it was after, yeah. it took a little winding up. And I think that a, a, an experienced debater immediately jumps on something like that because that's a really critical point for a Democrat to make. So on. one of the things that I wonder about when it comes to this debate is who is what, what were they told? What were Vance and, and Walls told in terms of what was their goal for the night? Probably they were told that this is about supporting mm -hmm. uh, the, your running mate and going after the running mate on the other side, the, the, the presidential ticket, yeah. the, not the vice president, and also trying to appeal uh, to undecided voters. And th there might only be 2 3% of those uh, left, but that's still a significant group when you have an election this raz razor thin. Uh, the margins are so tight. So one of the things I thought is, it sounded, based on how you listen to the Vance and Walls talk, that they there are certain assumptions that they're making about those undecided voters. Sure, yeah. One of them, that those undecided voters support abortion rights. Mm -hmm. Because J.D. Vance is fairly clear and on the record and has been for years that he supports banning abortion nationally. It was on his Senate issues page before he was picked uh, as Donald Trump's running mate. To hear J.D. Vance talk about that issue tonight, he, he, he expressed consternation with the Republican Party for not reaching out more, not talking to more people, wanting to provide more options for women. 
Um, and, and yes, absolutely did Tim Walls did not I, I go just, after him that on that. That is what I'm, that's yeah. part of the point, is that you're actually explaining exactly what I think was missing on the debate stage. J.D. Vance has a record on abortion. And you didn't really hear about that from Tim Walls. It doesn't have to be lengthy, but you just didn't hear it. And, and uh, secondly, J.D. Vance's job tonight was to launder Trumpism for middle America, for those undecided voters. And I think that, that in large part, he was able to do that without getting a whole lot of pushback from uh, Tim Walls on the stage. And maybe they're talking to different segments of that undecided pool, but I don't Vance, think so. Vance was able to just do what he came to do, which is to take Trumpism and just uh, package it up I in meant, a different when way. When I said rehab, I don't, I don't necessarily think at the end of the day, though, yeah. that what we saw is going to make a big difference at the top of the ticket. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you listen to J.D. Vance describe the Trump years, low inflation, uh, the world was not on fire, peaceful transfer of power, I mean, it sounds great. I don't know that that's necessarily exactly what the world experienced. And if you leave the public with that impression, that's what they're going to. Especially when it comes to the peaceful watching, transfer that's of what power. They're there was not. Just, just for the record, there was. There was not a peaceful transfer of power. We all saw it. Uh, John King, what were your thoughts? Uh, well, my thoughts are based on incoming from Democrats and Republicans throughout the debate, and they saw this as a debate in two parts. Essentially, the first 40 minutes, where a lot of Democrats were getting a little nervous, and Republicans were quite elated, uh, thinking that J.D. Vance was prosecuting the case they want to prosecute, uh, going after the Biden-Harris record on the economy, going after the Biden-Harris record on the border, uh, repeatedly talking about inflation was lower, prices were lower, things were better in your life when Donald Trump was president, things are worse now. Uh, the same group, even the Republicans conceded, and Democrats were much more happy with that second hour, where they believe on health care, on gun rights, on abortion rights, on democracy in January 6th, on issues that the Democrats believe play more in their favor, that Governor Walls got his footing and was a much better debater and, and drawing much sharper contrast. The question, Jake, is, number one, does it matter at all? They're the vice presidential candidate. Candidates. In the past, it hasn't mattered much. We'll see because this campaign is very different. Uh, but at the beginning, the two issues driving the campaign right now are Harris has a big deficit on the economy, Harris has a big deficit on immigration, and Republicans were happy tonight and Democrats a little bit nervous that it, on those two issues, Vance carried it. Uh, we will soon find out how voters themselves are responding to the debate. We, we have a focus group of undecided voters. Uh, in Michigan, big important battleground state, we're going to check in with them. We're also going to get the first results of CNN's exclusive instant poll. This is a poll of people who watched the debate. Anderson, what, what's the view uh, at the table uh, in terms of the debate? What, what do your folks think? Uh, well, I'm about to poll them right now, but I do think it was fascinating how nervous it seemed that Governor Waltz was when he first came out and uh, to the point was made earlier. Uh, Perhaps, I think it was Dana's point, not doing a lot of television interviews, local, uh, national, made a I, difference. Yes, I think that is one, that is absolutely true. And I thought his first answer on uh, the situation in the Middle East was probably one of his weakest answers. Um, he closed strong, without a question. And on those, uh, on those questions of abortion, uh, the Affordable Care Act, and of course, the end on democracy. I think he did very, very well. I, I, you know, people are shooting me numbers from dial groups across the way, and pretty surprisingly to me, they basically ruled, uh, said it was more of a, a draw. One thing should be noted, uh, and that is the degree to which there we, we discussed before the debate. There are two J.D. Vances. Mm -hmm. There's the J.D. Vance that you saw tonight, and then there's the J.D. Vance who is a right-wing social media troll the guy who really attracted the right to him, he definitely went through door A tonight, and he had a <laughs> mission, and that mission was to, to be what Donald Trump isn't, <laughs> which is to, be, to sound reasonable, to be uh, courteous to the opponent, to acknowledge that there may have be some reasonableness in the opponent's argument, but I have some other differences. I mean, it was it was really which Governor pronounced. Walls almost played along with. I mean, rather than sort of pointing out, wow, this is a completely different guy, uh, he sort of said, oh, we, and, we agree on Well, this. and I think it comes naturally to Waltz. I, I think someone, uh, someone texted me and said, I wonder how many people in the country said, gee, I wish these could be the two candidates because they were people who were, seemed to be having a reasonable uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. Bottom line on this, 
I don't think it changes the race at all. It was an interesting night. I don't think it changes the race at all. I was struck by the fact that J.D. Vance is a significantly more eloquent Donald Trump. Watching that, I don't agree with J.D. Vance on, on quite a bit, but he speaks to MAGA in a way that he comes off as an incredibly effective communicator. I honestly would be surprised that Donald Trump doesn't want to debate again because J.D. Vance did so well and he's going to want the final kind of, you know, the closing argument. But listen, the a different the, J.D. Vance is a chameleon. There's, there's multiple sides to him. It's one of his greatest political strengths he showed up with a command of facts there were some untrue things that he said Many. but he seemed he tried to show the side of empathy with him that I found myself believing it and then I remember his lies about Haitian kids his comments about childless cat ladies and his general record online is a mean-spirited internet troll so long and short I don't know that this moves the needle but I do think it solidifies his place as the MAGA era parent after Trump